Lisa Caddy. We're in the midst of a Eucharistic revival, a foundation of our faith that traces back to the Last Supper. Jesus gave bread and wine, his body and blood, to the apostles. But what else was served at that historic meal? Currents News' Jessica Easthope shows us the menu in Williamsburg. It's not the most decadent meal you've ever seen, but it's historic. So here are some of the dishes that they would have eaten. This is what was eaten at the Last Supper. While experts can't say with absolute certainty what was served, these foods were common in the Middle East 2,000 years ago. Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello, a former chef and the pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Annunciation Parish in Williamsburg, did his best to recreate it. It's been 2,000 years, so food has a evolved, traditions have changed, and things have been added, things have been taken out. So here's what was on the menu. Lamb stew, beans, olives, with the pits, of course, fish sauce, dates, unleavened bread, and wine. A simple meal to go along with the simple life Christ led. He came among the simplest of the people. These are things that Jesus used so that everyone could understand what he was trying to say and the, the meaning of his teachings. What would be missing from this meal is dairy. Keep in mind, Jesus was Jewish, so technically what they ate at the Last Supper was kosher. The foods that he, he ate and the apostles ate, I'm sure they, they followed to the letter you know, of the law. Italian archaeologists researched what the Last Supper looked like using resources like art, specifically third century catacomb paintings. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper is iconic, but historically inaccurate. They look like little di dinner rolls. I don't think that was like that. You know, the spread lends itself to several different pairings. Of them with the spices and they would just dip it in. The most significant of them all, bread and wine. The bread and wine is really a message to us that to follow him is very simple, just sacrifice. Give of yourself to others. And that's what he did totally. This food may not be everyone's taste, but it's a reminder that Jesus invites everyone to the table. In Williamsburg, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. Such an interesting story. You could try some of Monsignor Jamie's recipes with his cookbook out now. You could pick up a copy of Breaking Bread with Monsignor Jamie from Feeding the Stomach to Feeding the Soul, which features a variety of meals Monsignor Jamie has made during his show right here on Net TV, on Amazon or your local Barnes & Noble. Speaking of that Eucharistic revival, leaders of the nationwide campaign have given us more of a preview of its main event, the National Eucharistic Congress. The event will happen July of next year in Indianapolis. Officials say more than 25,000 have already registered. Each day there will be a large mass with plenty of opportunities for confession and a place for perpetual adoration. A massive Eucharistic procession will also happen during the Congress, but the route is still being determined. For more information and updates on the Eucharistic Revival and that Congress, just go to EucharisticRevival.org. A diocesan-wide event for the Revival is coming up soon, bringing Catholics from all over Brooklyn and Queens to Maimonides Park on October 7th. The whole stadium will be filled with the faithful for family catechesis, a Eucharistic procession, and a Mass. If you want to go, you can register at dioceseofbrooklyn.org and search Eucharistic Revival. From there, you can register register to receive important updates for this special day for the whole family. Turning now to a Christ-filled celebration at a Gravesend church, they unveiled their restored crucifix last Sunday. Parishioners at St. Simon and Jude Church gathered for the rededication and blessing of Christ on the cross. It was restored by members of the lay organization, the Legion of Mary, who saw the statue needed to be spruced up and decided to put in the time and money to do it. Forty parishioners took part, hand-painting the statue until it looked like new. The group says they were happy to do it because the crucifix shows us the love of our Lord. Soon the nation will remember a tragic day in our history, the terrorist attacks on 9-11. Those remembrances began today with the Pentagon holding an observance ceremony. Employees of the Department of Defense gathered in honor of those who died on September 11th and the heroes who gave their lives saving others. 
On Monday, New York's bravest will honor those heroes. Members of the FDNY will walk from the World Trade Center to the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph in Brooklyn. There, they will gather for mass with the Co-Cathedral's rector, Father Christopher Henyu. If you want to join them in their prayers, you can watch the mass live right here on Net TV. Just tune in Monday, September 11th at noon. You can read in-depth stories from 9-11 and the aftermath in the tablet newspaper, including the story of a permanent memorial at a Catholic church. These two steel beams melted together in the shape of a cross came from the rubble and currently reside at Our Lady of Angels Church next to a plaque with the names of the parishioners who died in the attacks. You can also read the poetry of a man who lost his wife because of 9-11. He said writing them was cathartic, honoring the woman who helped the city pick up the pieces after the attack and would later succumb to a 9-11 related illness. You can read all these stories and more by picking up the paper at your local church this weekend. You can also support the tablet thanks to their membership program. To learn more about it and find out everything you can get with your donation, just go to the tablet.org slash become dash a dash member. Next Tuesday, the Diocese of Brooklyn will say goodbye to a priest who was a pillar of the black Catholic community. The funeral mass for Monsignor Paul Jervis will be held at St. Francis of Assisi St. Blaise Church in Prospect Lefferts Gardens, Brooklyn. Bishop Robert Brennan will preside over the service. Monsignor Jervis served as the pastor there before his death last Tuesday. The priest also led the cause of canonization for Monsignor Bernard Quinn, who established the first church for black Catholics in the Diocese of Brooklyn, St. Peter Claver. Monsignor Jervis also served as pastor of that church. And finally tonight, how about this for a matchup? Pope Francis met with Sylvester Stallone. No. We grew up with your films. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew the Pope was a Rocky Very fan? Much. Stallone met the Holy Father at the Vatican on Friday, where he joked that the two were going to box. But rather than getting into the ring, the pontiff offered a blessing. Stallone was raised Catholic, but returned to the faith after his daughter was born sick in the late 90s. The actor was in Italy to receive an honorary citizenship in a southern city where his grandfather and father grew up my family. Huge fans of the Rocky films. <laughs> and that is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.